Alright, welcome to the next tutorial. <clears throat> Last time, we looked at how to go from Read Out Loud and move your work over to Draft Builder. So here's where we left off, in Draft Builder. So I reread my information, maybe even my own notes too. Don't forget to always read over your own writing. And now I'm ready to write. So guess what I'm going to do next? You guessed it. I'm going to go to File, and this time I'm going to send to Write out loud. So right out loud is going to start and basically I've got a huge white canvas to draft my first draft and start writing. Um, the reason this information is here and the whole reason I went through getting it is so that I can look in, at here at any time and read this. I don't have to go back to the websites where I got it from. I don't have to reread. I don't have to flip through pages of notes, which there's nothing wrong with doing that, especially for you iPad people who are doing it. Um, but it's nice to have it all here with my own notes, uh, just so handy, so all in one place. So I can start typing. I want an introduction. Are you fed up? with water pollution. Are you fed up with water pollution? Now, having somebody read back what you wrote is really valuable. That way you can hear what it sounds like. Um, and if you don't have read out loud or write out loud, read it to yourself out loud. It really tells you how it sounds uh, and how it's going to sound to your readers. But I don't know about you, that drove me crazy. I'm, I can type faster without that person reading to me. So I'm going to go over here to um, speech and I'm going to turn speech off just so that I can write without that uh, reading person reading to me every single word because then he stops at the sentence and reads the sentence and I lose track of what I was thinking of when that happens. So I turned it off. I think you'll, you'll like this. It makes it a little better. And so I started with a question. I want to hook my readers and I want to give them an idea of what my writing is going to be about. So that's how I'm going to draft my um, introductory paragraph. The last tool in this suite is called CoWriter. And you know what? I'm going to show it to you now. So I'm going to launch CoWriter because if you've ever had a problem with spelling, watch how this thing works. It just might be what you need to uh, fix any spelling errors. So I'm going to type water and I'm going for pollution. So let's say I typed it wrong. I, I typed P-O-L-U. But if you look over here, it's telling me, oh, pollution. pollution. Thank you. Has two L's. So I'm going to click on pollution and it typed it for me. I could have also clicked on the number so if, I, if uh, my next word is going to be is, is I'm going to do number one. I just hit the number one, and it typed it for me. This is pretty cool. It gives you up to five choices of words uh, that it thinks you're trying to type. So if you're typing a big word, and you're just not sure how to spell it, keep trying until this shows you the right word. The, and then you don't have to worry. You'll get it right. So water pollution is a huge problem. Um to our planet. Oops, I guess I forgot the P. Planet. Too many people and oops and especially businesses and factories uh, dump bad things into our lakes, rivers, and oceans. Did you notice any spelling mistakes there? Let's see what this sounds like. I'm going to have the uh, speech turned on, and I want it to read this to me. Are you fed up with water pollution? Water pollution is a huge problem to our planet. Okay. Too many people in these speciality businesses and factories dump bad things into our lakes, rivers, and deakings. Whoa, that didn't sound right, because I spelled some words wrong. So I look around, 
I go, especially. Did I spell that wrong? Oh, look at that. There's a special. Especially. It had two L's. And then what's wrong with this one? It doesn't even know. Look at that. It. I messed it up so bad. Um, so I'm going to fix this one myself because I knew what I did wrong. And there it is, number one. <coughs> and factories dump bad things into our lakes, rivers. And Forgot the A. Put it back together. And then what's Cohen's? I spelled oceans wrong, but you know, this is one I can catch. It's O. Ock. See, no, not Ock, dude. Wait. There. I'm going to turn him back off again because he's getting annoying. Um, so that is one way the reading is really helpful as you're, ty as you're typing. Or you can wait till you're done and just have it read the whole thing back to you. But I want to show you another tool that's really cool. Let's say I had used the wrong two there. Um, words that sound the same but have different meanings are called homonyms. And right here is a homonym checker that's really helpful after you're done writing. Run this checker and it tells you, like homonyms. down here, the word you could have two uh, meanings. It could be Y-O-U as in you. Or it could be E-W-E, as in you, a female sheep. Well, since that's the one I want, I don't want it to say a female sheep. I'm going to go to the next word. And then it goes to two. Now, two is one that has three different uh, spellings. It could be T-O, meaning toward, going somewhere. T-O-O, -O, meaning also. Or T-W-O, meaning one, two. So that one happens to be the correct usage. Now, hour could be the time hour or our planet. That's also correct. But do you see how helpful it is? Now, look on this one. I meant to use T-O-O. -O. So I'm going to go to 2 and then go to change. And it changed it. Then all words are... All words have been verified. verified. Thank you. I was just going to say that. Um, well, there you have it. Uh, this is how Write Out Loud can help you. So I've shown you a few things. You've got right here, co-writer, to help you spell. You've got uh, this thing right here to help you look back at, oh, what was one of the ways I can keep water clean? Oh, don't overuse pesticides and fertilizers. Let me write that. I could even take my own writing, grab it, and drop it in here. This is how Chimicum Creek can get polluted. Boom. Um, if I do want to use something that somebody said, because they said it so well, I can take a little something, drag it over, and check it out. It's already got the parenthes uh, parentheses, excuse me, the quotation marks. It's quoted because I didn't say it. I didn't write it. And I can only use small bits of information to quote. Okay, please don't quote huge chunks of information, because then you might as well just put a link to their website and don't do anything. But then you don't learn, and your parents don't like that, and neither do I. I want you in here learning science. Now, we talked about this in class. After you put a quote, you have to say where you got, got, the, hey, it's not that. It's got this from and put the URL, which will look like this. Oops, not that one. Hey, stop that. But the thing about this program is that it does um, type things for you. Well, it's the slash slash, and it's not letting me put it. Believe me, I'm trying. So you put the HTTP URL address there so that when it's in your blog, people can click on it and see where you got your quote from in case they want to read more. Um, remember to save often. Okay, that's the save. So that next day you come in, you can keep typing your work and have the uh, speech person read it to you. So that's in a nutshell. I mean, you're going to fill this page with writing. And then you're, when you're done, you're going to copy everything and paste it into your blog. But that's another lesson. You can see that in one of my iPad tutorials. And that concludes our solo suite software of Read Out Loud, Draft Builder, Write Out Loud, and co-writer. Thank you for joining me.